Hi, this is Dave with Ferguson Paint and also with Tradio, your YouTube channel. Um, right now we're in a new house and we're going to break down what makes walls really, really nice. Now the first thing I'm going to say is with, when it comes to walls, there is hundreds of different levels of quality of walls that, that you can find in any sort of house. And um, it's just like any skill, I guess. Uh, lots of different levels and the goal is the goal as professionals is to make that level as high as possible. Now within the company that um, I help run, we strive to keep our wall standards very high. Um, it's a challenge because everyone's um, on a different page, sometimes in a little bit more of a rush and that's where painting walls really shows that they were in a rush or they were in a, in a, in a bad mood or whatever. Painting tends to manifest the, the inside um, person. Um, but the walls right here, um, these, these walls have been primed and they've been pole sanded and they've been patched right here. So primed means the wall, the drywall, the, the drywall has been sealed. Sealed and the gypsum board and the drywall mud have two different textures. The primer's goal is to try and unify those textures somewhat, whereas the, the finished coat that you put on, um, you can't really use that as a primer in the, because it won't unify those two textures as much as a primer will. Uh, paint and primers in one, stay away from them 100%. They're expensive, you're gonna use more of it. Regular drywall primers are much cheaper, and so that's why we use them, and they do the best job. So what makes good walls the best is consistency. There's three categories. Consistency, um, a texture, like the smoothness, and the sharpness. So within consistency, when you're rolling something on, you're, 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 you're applying with a roller, typically. That's what we're, we do a roller because that's how you can get the most controlled quality uh, where spraying is a whole different ball game used for you know high output stuff like hotels where quality isn't consi considered to be that much of a, a constraint as much as new homes are. Um, so we're rolling it on and what you want to look for is you want to look for consistent stipple. Now we're not trying to make this a windy lake type stipple. You're trying to make it a nice refined stipple that is, that is a small stipple. And that's where the, the roller thickness comes into play. If you're using a roller thickness of 20 millimeters as opposed to 15 or 10 millimeters, that's where you're going to get more of a windy leg stipple, which isn't that desirable in my opinion. And I believe that's kind of um, true with most professionals. They like that fine, fine stipple because it creates just a nicer look, kind of like a digital camera. Uh, with the amount of megapixels in it. There's, the more of them, the sharper it is. Um, so that's stipple. Now the next thing is ridges. Um, when you're rolling, particularly when you're rolling onto new drywall, the, the biggest problem is you're dealing with temperature and you're dealing with soaking time. The drywall primer dries so fast that you can't just dip and spend lots of time rolling and not have any sort of ridges or inconsistent things that are eyesores to a professional because it just dries so fast. So you have to have someone who knows what they're doing rolling, particularly in the summertime when it's flipping hot. So you gotta make sure that when you're rolling, you're rolling and you're only going that far and you just avoid those ridges. Ridges are bad and they thwart the first classification of quality, which is consistency. The second one is smoothness. When you're dealing with uh, new walls, you're dealing with lots of dust on the walls, no matter how much you vacuum them or sweep them, inside that gypsum, there is just crap. And the, after you put the paint on, you feel it, it's not smooth. And therefore, it doesn't create consistency. When that light comes in on the angle, when I look at that, you wanna be able to see consistency. And that's where roughness is going to complement that consistency. So that's where pole sanding comes into play. So I'm going to grab a pole sander here. So there's two different types of pole sanders. You have this pole sander, you have a 
circular pulse angle. The circular pulse angle seems to be the pulse angle of choice these days, but in my mind, the mind of quality, not driven by 100% efficiency, I prefer the rectangular pulse angle because when you're applying the pressure onto the wall, like here, you push here, and it, it covers this much, but not that good. It covers a bigger area, but with less pressure than something like this. With this one, yes, you don't cover as much area, but there's more pressure on that area, and therefore it becomes smoother. And so it's, it's less efficient, but it's way better in quality. And then you can also um, access more areas like in corners and beside windows where this circu circular one isn't going to work. So the circular one is built for efficiency, but it's not built for quality. And our company tries to, to be the best that we can. And so I strive to, or I, I tell our people to use these probably rectangular pull sanders. It's important to pull sand in between every coat, no matter what, because we're trying to create consistency. So the next thing is uh, sharpness, sharpness in the lines. As you can see in this paint job, particularly this little wall that the camera is focused on, everything is taped. Now everything is taped not because we're professionals and we don't know how to cut, but because when you tape a line and then you pull that line, up, you pull that tape off, that line is going to be by far the sharpest possible. Any painter who is telling you that they can cut a line better than anyone can tape doesn't know what they're doing. Every professional who creates the highest end products will tape their lines 100%. And, and that, the reason why is because you can create a consistent sharp line. So the next thing is the consistency in the method of application. Now, most professional painters who are focusing on high-end new homes is going to be, um, their, most professionals are going to um, cut and roll. They're gonna use a brush and a roller. Our goal is to create minimum brush marks. And that means tape and roll right up to the tape. Roll right down to the tape. And therefore, the roller stipple goes right up against the corners, right up against the casing. You don't see these brush marks two or three inches out. Um, a lot of painters are going to be brushing all the way down, you know, four inches from the ceiling or four inches from here because they may not have to roll. Well, that compromises the whole consistency model, consistency of method of application. You want that nice small stipple right as far as the case may let you. And so uh, once, once the finished coat is gonna be applied, um, it's a lot easier to apply a finished coat over top of finished coat because there's less absorption going on. Um, you see these little spots, these little spots that have been patched. Um, they are going to be spot primed because you can't just paint over it and have that consistent sheen happen because it'll absorb more there. Uh, no matter what type of filler that you're going to use, always make sure you spot prime before you put that finish coat on because you need that consistency in the sheen. Now, the next thing is chunk management. Chunk management is a huge um, compromiser of amazing quality. And it's probably the biggest challenge um, of professional painters, managing chunks in paint. Ever since the whole, the birth of latex paints, they dry quicker and therefore they become chunkier quicker. When it's on our brush, I'll grab this brush here, so you have, you have this paint that's, that's out. No matter what we do, there's gonna be a little bit of dry paint there. And to try and avoid that getting on the wall is a whole challenge in and of itself. Then we have that same type of challenge when it comes to the roller. The roller, you're rubbing it against the, the walls of the tray, and over time, that dries, and that becomes chunky. So how do you avoid that? Well. You try and use new tray liners all the time. You try and make sure you avoid rubbing your cage up against the walls of the tray. And then also, all paint become all all, all paint comes uh, chunky. Just having that in your mind, knowing that you have to strain your paint every time you need to use it. 
strain the paint. Get some of your mom's old nylons. Go to the paint store. Get a strainer. All paint is chunky. Know that. Treat it like that. Strain your paint and then you will be dealing with a lot less chunks in your paint. Because chunks, like I said, are a massive uh, thwarter to perfection. Okay, So I hope those uh, elements have helped you in your uh, ability to understand what makes a wall a really nice wall and can help you in the future of your painting.